Hello, welcome to Uncle Rodder's first video blog. Um, inspired by you, Roger, to share some of my recent record purchases since I've started buying vinyl again, and uh, got some interesting things on the, on the deck here that I've purchased recently. Starting with my recent purchase during the week when I managed to get into town and pick up some records from a wee um, record shop that's been around in Christchurch for quite some time but had kind of disappeared a wee bit actually after the big earthquakes of 2011. Um, anyway I found them again and they're tucked away on this little street. Unfortunately we're not a lot of parking but it's a small shop and they've got very little stock nowadays um, but still got some interesting stuff floating around. So had a browse through there and managed to pick up um, this thing here which is a compilation of Soweto music from South Africa, 1987 Earthworks through Virgin Records. And uh, yeah, this is the township music. Great, great um, African music, really enjoy it. And um, if I was familiar with those from the internet, that I'd found them on the internet um, and downloaded them and had listened to them and really enjoyed them. So uh, quite like that. And then also at the same place, I got this thing which is a, something a little bit interesting quite rare it said around the place and uh, this is a benefit record done in the Netherlands in 1986 and it's got uh, some political things inside it and fight apartheid it's got this magazine that they put together and uh, it's got some articles in it about the um, Shootings in Soweto in 1976. It's got a wee cartoon booklet. Um, music side one is studio music that was recorded um, specifically for the album, and it's got a couple of Af Soweto type tracks similar to what's on that previous album. It's got some live stuff that was done for the benefit concert for the album, which is some punk and some dub reggae. Um, the punk's pretty bad, it's pretty hardcore. Um, the side A stuff's pretty good, but yeah, it's a it's a bit of a interesting record though, and quite rare, quite a rare one. And um, also from that shop, I picked up this, which I used to have many years ago, uh, the first Teardrop Explodes album, Kilimanjaro, Julian Cope. This is an excellent record, great sort of old style power pop from the early eighties, well, or nineteen eighty. This was put out. Um, Yep, records were in very good nick. The covers are a bit dodgy, a bit worn around the edges. Um, nothing major though. And another one I picked up at that shop on the day Pete Shelley's first solo album after the Buzzcocks 1981, um, Homo Sapien. This was a big record for me when I was at school. All the mates, all my mates were into it, and we used to play it quite a lot. So that was kind of cool. I hadn't managed to find that on CD either so um, not that I'd really looked for it actually so just came across it that day um, the uh, weekend or two before I'd been down to a place called Penny Lane in Christchurch which is the, probably the biggest record shop we have left nowadays um, and uh, they have a rather large selection of vinyl which I've been pretty much perusing for the last three or four months or over the last 12 months since I got the small turntable and um, I brought a Gun Club EP, very first EP they did, which I had on vinyl years ago. And unfortunately, being second hand, got it home, had a buckle, couldn't play the first track. So I took it back and said, what, you know, can, you know, I'll exchange it for something. And they were more than happy to do that. And came across this, sitting in the bins, just newly arrived since the other week I'd been there. And uh, so this is a 2014 reissue of an original Blue Note. Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage, uh, Freddie Hubbard, George Coleman, Ron Carter, Anthony Williams, and Herbie Hancock. 1965, it was recorded, and this is, the, I mean, this is actually nearly brand new. Picked it up. It's recorded, um, re, re, remastered, but apparently, according to their website, they're remastering them to try and sound as um, authentically as possible to the original vinyl releases and uh, yeah it's a good album and uh, it's 
um, very clean pressing and also it's very uh, good heavy heavy duty vinyl so um, yeah it's uh, looking forward to actually getting some more of those blue note releases actually um, this one here uh, my exploration of African music through Fila Kuti I got hold of found this in the um, Penny Lane this is actually a reissue brand new managed to pick it up for a reasonable price because the new vinyl over here is pretty dear again it's on heavy duty vinyl uh, this was actually put out on Knitting Factory Records and they have released several of these girls albums so this is great Afro pop um, really enjoy it yeah yeah the other week when I was there I picked this up the second hand bins and this is a, is a oh, it's a classic for me, record from my youth, um, Burning Ambitions, A History of Punk, double LP, um, British, mostly British, although it does have the D Kennedys. So it goes from the early days of the fall aboard uh, Buzzcocks, uh, even back to the 101ers, which was um, one of the first bands that uh, Joe Strummer was in. And then it goes through the Stranglers, early Generation X, um, early Adam and the Ants, The Damned, Etc. Etc. And then up into the more hardcore punks in the early 80s. So this came out on Cherry Red Records in about 1984, 83, 84. Um, this thing never did not leave my turntable for quite some time when I was a young fella. Um, it's got a bit of a write up inside there. Yeah, uh, covers a wee bit teddy, but it's actually in generally good good nick bit scratchy probably got played to death whoever owned it like mine did but uh yeah that was a that was a really good find so really pleased to have seen that one and actually the cd reissue that they did of it never had the right track listing order and you know you get so used to hearing a record like that with a certain track listing um so the new led zeppelin reissues um, remasters so this is the three album set on 180 gram vinyl of Coda as you can see and to be honest I haven't had a decent listen to this yet but I've actually got another couple of them that I picked up. Now um, on a few trips to the shop earlier uh, I'd found a band, this band called Blood Rock. Uh, this is from the early 70s, 1970, 1972. So this is you know pretty standard. Um, 70s rock, hard rock. This was about their fourth album, and um, I haven't had a decent listen to this one yet. But what I did actually, what, what and the reason I brought that was that I'd actually found this version, this one, a couple of weeks earlier, and um, this was their th third album, I think, from memory, third or fourth, something like that, 1971. So. I saw this in the bin, was looking through, sort of recognised this guy Lee Pickens who was the lead guitarist, I don't know why I recognised his name, but um, for some reason I did so I thought I'd give it a go. This is really good hard rock, very good 70s hard rock, most impressed. A friend of mine came over here to listen to it and um, to be honest this is rated not as highly as their previous albums and the one that I just showed you before is not rated quite so well at all. But um, no, I was most impressed. Pretty cool cover. Something a bit different. Hadn't seen it before. Um, and I actually spent up quite a bit of money on this trip to the, to, the, to Penny Lane. Um, picked up this guy, Dollar Brand, who I'd been familiar with from um, some albums that he'd done in the early 70s that I'd found on some blog sites, which I was quite impressed with. Uh, so most of the stuff, this is actually a compilation and it's re recordings from 1971 through to 1977 and uh, so it's African, South African guy so it's very African influenced and um, yeah this is a really good pressing, uh, really good recordings and it's actually better than I thought it was going to be because I know some of his latest stuff got a bit mellow for my liking but uh, you do that. Another Led Zeppelin reissue presents. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit disappointed with the quality of the, the vinyl. Not, not the vinyl itself, but the actual sound quality hasn't quite lived up to my expectations. Um, 
might get the CDs as well just to do a comparison actually um, but yeah although I mean I've been listening to a lot of ECM records on the new turntable and I mean they are just outstanding quality and it's pretty hard to um, compete with that but speaking of outstanding quality vinyl this thing I found in the bins the other week now I wasn't familiar with it but in the past I've had pretty good luck with picking up records with a couple of dirty old hippies on the <laughs> on the cover and uh, this one okay turned out that it's a, a couple of guys called Chess and Dave who had some pretty big commercial success with some sort of country-ish country-fied music back in the early 80s from memory I, I couldn't remember the song but I know them if I heard them this is a so this is a country album but sort of like a country album of um, country music that you'd hear in a British pub which is basically what it is but outstanding recording outstanding quality vinyl um, the music's average listenable some good steel guitar um, so yeah it, it just shows you what vinyl can do if it's done right and um, no very impressed uh, the Gun Club this was their first album Fire of Love this was an old favorite back in the eight, early 80s for me had this many years ago so good to have it back on vinyl again um, punk, country punk sort of music um, uh, Jeffrey Lee Pierce he was an outstanding songwriter and um, this one here a beautiful day pretty um, reasonably well known late 60s 1969 San Francisco I think was it San Francisco LA somewhere around there so um, sort of semi psychedelic gatefold but uh, got some great tracks on it white bird just stunning in Bulgaria um, you yeah, know this is a this is a great album and uh, not cheap either unfortunately vinyl prices second hand here aren't the best and then another back to the 70s thing uh, interesting cover here dead woman with arrow on back and naked on a rocking horse this is a vertigo records compilation um, so you can see there there's a list of bands probably can't read them but we've got Coliseum, Rod Stewart, Jimmy Campbell, uh, Magna Carta, I mean I knew some of the names of this Black Sabbath, uh, Manfred Mann of course the well known ones, Uriah Heap, but a bunch of other ones, Nucleus, Cressida, stuff I wasn't quite so familiar with, so semi hard rock, semi prog sort of rock, yeah, actually some good stuff on there, good good album, um, double album of stuff, yeah, cost me an arm and a leg, unfortunately. Um, Going back to early favourites of my teen, late teen years, this one here, British punk hardcore Peter and the Test Tube Babies. This is comedy punk pretty much, there's some um, band from the pub, Up Your Bum, Run Like Hell, Shit Stirrer, Keep Britain Untidy, you know there's some pretty uh, far out songs on here, this is the sort of shit we used to play when we were like 14 years old, on the bus up loud who annoy the hell out of everybody love it classic pick this one up here because it had a fella in it called Jan Ackerman from Focus who did that fabulous song called Hocus Pocus years and years ago back in the 70s so this is Brain Box so this is yeah Scandinavian prog you might say um, haven't had a real decent listen to it but he's a great guitarist and um, yeah, there's some good guitaring on here. Some of it's a little bit sort of symphonic um, from memory when I had listened to it. But until uh, I get my turntable back with my new cartridge, I'll have to wait and see. Have a decent listen to it. Uh, Chris Hines. Chris Hines, this is um, one of those kind of jazzy pop sort of strings. So he's taking batch music, Buck, I should say and putting them to jazz and pop so um not one of his best ones i i know Re the reason i brought it was because i knew i'd had one of his earlier albums of the chris hines combination i think he used to call it and i really liked it um I'm going back and forwards between different genres here this one here back to the punk stuff this was another compilation i had when i was a young lad, lad of in my teens and it's got things like Slaughter and the Dogs, Cockney Rejects, Manufactured Romance, um, Exploited somewhere, 
well, maybe not on this one, anti-pasty. So fairly hardcore punk, mostly British from the early 80s. Oh, yeah, there's Exploited. Yeah, is it actually all British? Stiff little fingers. Um, great compilation. One of the better ones that I had in the day, actually. And, uh, and it's pretty good nick to, um, to play. Another Led Zeppelin. This is In Through the Outdoor. I haven't even got around to playing this one yet. Um, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to trying that out. But like I say, I wasn't that impressed with, with the quality of them. So I'm hoping that that, uh, that one will be better because it's got some good stuff on it. Um, delving deeper into the pile. Because yeah. I haven't got a lot of records just yet. So into... This stuff, ECM records, um, especially Roger, I know you've got quite a lot of ECM stuff I've seen listed on your blog that you've been listening to. Uh, Abercrombie Quartet, um, 1980. So I'd been, when I got the earlier turntable, I'd been into Penny Lane and discovered quite a large collection of these ECM ones pretty much going right back to the early days. So I, I picked up some very early ECM, so most of them from the 70s. The, the um, vinyl is all in extremely good condition. The cover's not quite so much. Here's another one here from um, Colin Walcott with Don Cherry. And uh, these are this is another later one. But um, they were all exceptionally good condition. Um, but like I say, the covers are a little bit rough. I think someone had sold a fairly good collection of them. Um, here's another one. Uh, Urbahard Weber. Again, this is one of the later ones, 1980. But again, in good condition. Most of them are really good. Some of them aren't quite my cup of tea. But um, I'm quite keen to keep collecting them, especially the early ones pre-1980. Um, this one, ECM, this one's completely off the ball for the ECM records. Um, again, this is a 1982. This is minimal synth basically it's synthesizer electronic music with uh, some percussion and a saxophone and a woman they're german but she's english but this is um this is a fantastic recording i mean it just sounds absolutely stunning on the on the vpi turntable um in the doge amp and it's most but it's something completely different saying that it's not that uncommon i've actually seen two copies of that in the shops um Oh, got an old favourite that I actually brought from the internet, Mary Ann Faithful, reissue 180 gram of her Broken English album from 1980. This is just a classic. Um, absolutely love it. And uh, have been giving it quite a quite a good thing to recently. Um, so a bunch of ECM records um, again that I've picked up. And then also on one of my trips recently, found some C CTI releases, so um, this guy, Hubert Laws, I'm not particularly um, overawed by him, but he just gets good reviews, some of his music. So this is CTI 6000, so this was the first of the second series of CTIs released in the early 70s. Um, this, this album was actually reissued from an earlier CTI release before they went independent. Um, so there's some good music on CTI. I'm quite keen to get my hands on some more of the CTI releases. Um, in fact, actually did manage to find a couple of others while I was browsing. Um, where are they? Oh, they're not here. They're somewhere else. But in, never mind. Um, so yeah, I got uh, Freddie Hubbard. Sorry, not Freddie Hubbard. I got another couple of from another jazz trio, which I prefer much better than that. Um, so, ECM Records again. This one here is Jean Garbarek. This is ECM 1007. So this is the seventh record that they put out back in the early 70s. And it's a really good, it's a, it's a great record. I mean, the recording is stunning. The playing is stunning. And the, and the music's pretty bloody good. Uh, Jean Garbarek Quartet, Afric Pepperbird. Um, so yeah, this is this is the, the earliest of the ones I've got, and I've got several res around this period um, PCM releases around this period. So um, really impressed with that, and and quite pleased with the music. And several Keith Jarrett ones. Um, picked this one up just the other day. Keith Jarrett again. 
and all. And, and anyway, but finally, uh, this here box set, Ryan Adams live at Carnegie Hall. This is just stunning. Um, Ryan released a 15 album box set of live in Europe. So 15 different concerts on record that he did in 2011. Unfortunately, before I even knew it existed, it had sold out. I think there was only four or 500 copies pressed. So um, disappeared pretty quick, sold out pretty much the day it went online. Um, so he's recorded this concert two nights at Carnegie Hall. There's six records in here. There is a CD set of this apparently, although I didn't see it, but um, um, there's also a shortened version on CD. But um, the sound quality is just him, acoustic guitar. The sound quality is just flipping unbelievable, really good. Unfortunately, the vinyl is a little bit disappointing. There's a few pops, even though brand new. I got this imported in from overseas, um, and there's a few pops and clicks in it, which was a bit disappointing um, for a brand new, pretty much brand new out of the packet. But um, I guess that's the uh, thing with vinyl. So, yeah, this is uh, really amusing. There's lots of between songs banter and he's got a great sense of humor um i know he's a bit of an infant terrible in the music scene and he's stirred a lot of people up but um i do love his music and uh, yeah so i'm really pleased to have this and uh yeah well that's sort of quite a lot in it so um that's a fair chunk of what i've collected over the last three or four months or so since i got the new turntable which uh <laughs> unfortunately it's probably going to slow down a bit now because I've had to uh, make a few other purchases and that, and I'm trying to get some headphones. So, anyway, um, thanks, Roger, for your uh, sharing your record collecting adventures because I've been really enjoying them, and really I'm just kind of doing this to um, say hello to you and and um, you know perhaps hopefully you find this a little bit interesting as well. Anyway, look forward to uh, um, seeing some more of your record um, collecting adventures.